everyone, how are you doing? In this video, I am going to tell you what you can do in February to jumpstart going cut flowers in your garden. I am going to share with you what I am doing this month, my little tips and tricks and ideas that maybe you can apply to your gardens or your growing methods. How I organize seeds, how I trim and prune my flowering truck, and how I clean my garden a little bit. I will also share with you my favorite gardening and flower design books that you can enjoy in winter time. And also what I think is the most important thing that you should do in February. All right, ready? I have 1.2 acre property and here's all, all my seeds. These are cool flowers, these are summer flowers, and these are vegetables. The seed in the very front of the row should be started in January, like poppies, lavender, loving amethyst, lysanthus, sweet pea. Actually, sweet pea should be in the very front. And here's some flower seed that you guys probably want to start in February. If you are in zone 7 or zone 6B, calendula should be start now and then you plant them outside in April and they will bloom in May around Mother Day. Like status, salvia, scabiosa. These flowers are very cold hardy so they can handle most of the time like to 20 degree Fahrenheit, ring everlasting. This is like a mini straw flowers. Straw flowers. All these cool flowers can be started now in about April. When the temperatures stay about 30 degrees, you can plant them outside. This group of flowers should be started in late summer or fall for them to bloom in the next spring. But if you didn't do that, you can start them now under go light and plant them out around late March but they will not be as robust as the ones that you started in fall and this row I am not going to worry about them now they should be started in around late March or April under grow light and then I plant them out in May like grasses, phlox, cosmos, marigold, salosia, cineus, cranary garden and sunflowers and some random annual and these are just vegetables four years ago in winter time i was bored to death so i looked up on internet what kind of plant that i can grow in winter time and i found a guy teaching other people to grow vegetables telling that you can grow kale and some other vegetables because they will do better in winter time they will be sweeter in winter time too and that is the best thing ever happened in my life. Also, sweet pea. I always thought that I should start sweet pea in spring. But, you know, after I watched Georgie Newberry from Common Farm Flowers, after that, I grow sweet pea in fall under unheated greenhouse, and they are fine. I also learned that broccoli rob doing good in wintertime too. Also, the green onion. If you are so bored right now, maybe grow some of this. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can find a spot in your garden that is warmer than the others. Something like south facing wall because the sun will shine through and the brick or the wall will absorb the heat during the daytime. And then it will slowly release the heat to the plant next to it. So the plant kinda get the extra heat overnight. Or you can create a little hoop house like this. It's very easy. You just need this plastic. It's about $60. Uh oh. Hmm. Don't die. What if you die? Don't, don't do it. Oh my god, you're gonna leave this alone? Where? Okay. Don't step on my snowdrop. Oh, you step on my snowdrop. This is another south facing wall. 
in my garden. It receives a lot of heat from the sunlight and also from the house. And I'll show you, I have my ranunculus here and they are doing fine without a hoop house. Here's another ranunculus that tried to come up. A lot of flowering shrubs that bloom in late summer or fall should be put around February. So in the spring, it will send out new shoots, new branches. This is Abelia, one of my favorite flowering shrubs that will bloom in late summer or fall. I cut the flowers in fall and make bouquets, but I didn't have the time to clean up. So today is a nice time to do it because it's nice out and I want to get out get fresh air and sunlight. So I technically kind of make it nice, cleaned up the dead branches and cut off the branches that stick out like this. Then I kind of step back to look whether it look nice or not. If it's not, I just keep trimming it. In the landscape world, the landscapers will use like the that machine like <laughs> like that and make it like a top priority, make it like a box wood. But in my cut flower world, I just thin it up. I cut the branches that look dead, look ugly from the inside of the bush. So this way, you know, the bush have more potential to send out new branches, which will produce the flower in late summer. However, roses are exceptions. Roses should be pruned in late winter or early spring when the new shoots are trying to grow. And then I don't know what's going on. They will manage to send out new branches and then they will bloom right in late spring or early summer. I am taking you guys to my secret spot to take a little step back and tell you something very important. Before you jump start doing a million things to create the most beautiful garden in the world in your backyard, I would like you to think about what is it really that you want. Why do you want a beautiful garden in your backyard? Why do you want to see beautiful flowers in summertime? Why? Do you want to create a beautiful bouquet for your home? It is important because down the road, you will have to make a lot of decisions. You will have to take a lot of actions. And there will be times that you get frustrated. There will be times that you feel indecisive. When you know exactly what you want, it will become so much easier. It will become so much more peaceful when you do all the gardening tasks in your garden. For me, I want my garden to be a happy place for myself, for Jason, and for family members, for friends who come to visit us. There are times that I fight with Jason over stupid things. And when that happens, I try my best to remind myself that my garden should be a happy place for both of us. There's a lot of times that I, you know, kind of ignore Jason and let him do whatever he wants. There's a lot of times too that Jason kinda, you know, let me do what I want to. I think a lot of you guys already know this aspect of gardening, but you know, there are always times that we tend to forget about it. And I am trying very hard to keep that in mind.
turn the pan. Perfect. This is my own recipe, and the good thing is that the texture is like cake, but the outside is like crunchy, like cookies, not too sweet. Want some pan right now? It's okay. It's okay. Meow meow meow. My garden cleaning approach is a little different to most other gardeners because I don't do big cleanup in spring and in fall. I want the wildlife, the insects, the animal have some places to hide in my garden during winter time and also summer time. And to be honest with you, I don't like cleaning up. Actually, I hate it. And that's why I, you know, can't do the big cleanup is like torturing for me so i kind of clean up slowly throughout the year and there are three kinds of cleaning up that i do in winter time first i clean up like the invasive plants in my garden like this english ivy it's so bad i kind of cut it a little bit you know and try not to hurt the tree if you are planning to get rid of English ivy or any invasive evergreen, it's best to do in winter time because they are dormant in winter time. They're not trying to grow back. But if you do it in summer time, when you cut it, it will like promote the plant to grow even more. So winter is like the best time to do this. Oh my goodness. The second kind of cleaning that I do in winter time is to take care of the spot that is unbearable. It's like way too messy. It's like an eyesore. Hello. What the heck? Are you okay? Are you okay? Pio, what happened? For instance, this sedum autumn joy, they're just fine. They look cute, they look nice, and I will not touch them. But that clump of dead peonies, I have to clean it up. I'm gonna take the steak out. I don't cut them back right to the ground. I always leave maybe one foot of the stalk like this because I will know that there's a peony on this spot and also this will be a little shelter for the insect. And the dead stem here, I just chop them up and feed them back to the garden. And the last kind that I am going... <laughs> and the last kind going to do in winter time is to um, clean up for clearing up a space for my cool flowers or winter flowers or early spring flowers like these poppies. So I'm gonna cut out some of this stalk of the salosia. <laughs> okay this is better. In this row I have the yarrow, fuel fuel and the poppies. They will bloom in spring and after that they will kind of die back and when they die back, I plant the slosha and you know the fall flowers in this row. And the dead branches here, they are slosha. And I can cut them back now. And I think it's okay because the wildlife and the insect can hide underneath the poppies and yarrow and this field too. These are just the tip of the iceberg. I have so many gardening and floral design books in my house, but I picked this because I think it would be most helpful for you, especially if you just start growing cut flowers. Okay, let's do the first one. This is one of my most favorite. It's Sarah Raven. 
And um, what I like about this book the most because I love her garden so much and you know her collection of flowers. This book is very detail oriented. There are a lot of description and instruction and ideas you know about the flowers and about cutting gardens. Um, if you like to read a lot, I think this is the best for you. This is also one of my most favorite books too because I love Georgie Newberry so much. She is the most practical flower grower because she simplifies a lot of growing processes. I just love her flower arrangement style so much because it's natural, it's unique, it's old-fashioned, and it's like freestyle and I feel so much peace when I, you know, try to adapt her flower arrangement methods and also growing methods. Next is Lucy Hunter. She's like a really artist like a flower artist and um, she has her own garden in UK. If you are a very artistic person and if you like, you know, something like kind of high-end, this book is probably for you. And she released her new book too. I plan to buy that <laughs> this winter. Next, Floret series. I mean, oh my, she has three books and I bought all of them. But if you really need to pick one, I recommend this, A Year in Flowers. What I love about this book so much because she kinda show us how to make, you know, seasonal flower arrangement and also all the ingredients that she used each season, each month. These two books are also good too if your husband wanna buy you something for Valentine's Day, maybe you kinda give him a hint, okay? This is the next one, it's, it's Seed Catalog but it's so special so so special because as you know i grow vegetables too and this book is like you know showing all the recipe of how to cook beautiful vegetables and you know that i grow a lot of edible flowers too and this book kind of show me you know how to cook flowers it's like oh my gosh this is a seed catalog from raseed.com all right, here's my most favorite book. I mean, the most of the most favorite book. And I know everything's my favorite, but this one is really my favorite. In Bloom by Claire Nolan. What I like about Claire Nolan so much because her style is exactly aligned with my vision for my gardens, for my flower arrangements. She has this, you know, cottagey, simple flower arrangement but has a little touch of artistic look of her arrangement her garden is cottagey is what i am trying to accomplish she used a lot of natural elements natural materials natural like structure in her garden and also her flower arrangements if you have to pick one book for the season and if you like my gardening style I think this is the best of the best. The last but not least, what I think you can do in February is to enjoy the season, enjoy winter, enjoy the little flowers that hidden in your garden, enjoy the foliage of the evergreen, the branches, enjoy the sunlight when it shines, enjoy the snow when it falls. I also think it's important that we allow ourselves to slow down, to get bored, to take a little break. But I totally understand that you click on this video because you want to jumpstart. Crane, don't tell me to slow down. Crane, don't tell me to take a break. I wanna start flowers now. Here's the thing that I did four years ago in February, and I think it is the best decision ever, ever that I ever made in my life is to set up grow light station. You know, it doesn't cost me a lot of money. The shelf probably $100 each, and the grow light probably $100. But you know, the ability for me to grow a little green things in my basement to watch the little seedling grow, it's just, it's just so wonderful. It's just like, help me feel like I'm growing something, I'm connecting to my garden, you know, in winter time. And uh, especially 
some of you who don't have a lot of space you know outside i made this video last year when i just started youtube channel now this the glow light just turned on automatically when we wake oh so drop oh oh this is one of my very first video on YouTube channel. I was like super shy, super shy. If you, if you wanna see my evolution on YouTube, you can check out this video. And if you wanna see how I set up Golai and start stealing cool flowers into my basement, you can check out this video too. All right, guys, I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.